Well, good morning and welcome again to Central Church. We are a Jesus church where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, where everyone is loved, and where anything is possible. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you've joined us before uh, and you join us often, welcome. Glad to, to have you with us. Uh, go check us out on the website as well. All kinds of interesting things there. And saying that, uh, I have the bulletin in my hand, but the bulletin is online. So please go check it out. I'm not going to tell you everything that's on there. A reminder, the Christmas Eve services, we have two this year, 5.30 and 7.30. There's room for about 150 plus people, max 180, depending on how we can put families together. But you have to book a ticket online to be able to come to the service. So go to the website, centralchurchcambridge.ca. Right on the front page, you'll find the place to click. It doesn't cost anything. You just have to pre-register so we have your name because we have to limit the capacity right now with COVID. So for the 5.30 and the 7.30, if you would like to attend, and you can get as many tickets as are available uh, at that moment. We are still busy with our mitten trees uh, for the kids uh, that are in need. So mitts, scarves, toques, all of these kinds of things that they would need for the winter. We're putting them on the tree in the front uh, entrance in the foyer of the church. Um, so if you come on a Sunday, put them in there. Otherwise, you can also drop them off at the church or you can make a donation uh, with an e-transfer. Talk to the office administrator uh, on a Tuesday and on a Thursday, she is in the office. Uh, White Gift Sunday is on December the 5th. Again, for the seniors through the self-help uh, food bank here in Cambridge, we're, we're putting together packages uh, of things that they would need, uh, personal items for over the, the Christmas time. Uh, put them in a, in a white uh, package um, uh, and uh, come and drop them off under the tree or you can bring them again Tuesday, Thursday. Just mark it with an M or an F for male uh, or female so that we know where it needs to go to. Um, on December 12th, we have a fireside Christmas that is being run by our family ministries and the youth ministries. It's going to be a really, really fun morning. So, so plan to be here uh, for that. Uh, we can't do the full service online. You'll only get the message online. Uh, so if you want to see the full service with the kids and all the things that are happening with that, you have to be uh, in church to be able uh, to do that. Um, all the other information is, uh, is in the bulletin. And as I said, it's online. Uh, please go check that out. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you that again uh, on this wonderful day, we can come to you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, your son who came into this world, who came into the darkness and shone your light, Lord Jesus, born into this world that we may have life. Thank you that we, we can celebrate this time, re reminding ourselves of, of why you came and the cost for you to come into this world. Uh, thank you in this day as we, as we talk about you, that you are going to speak into our lives and you are going to ask questions. And thank you, Lord, that we may be able to, to respond to that, to answer you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for taking care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever noticed how often we use the word no when we speak? Um, and perhaps it comes from, from when we were children and actually from baby time. You remember how often we would say, no, don't do that. No, don't touch that. No, don't go there. No, this, no, that. But what I'd like us to do today, uh, I, I'd like us to, to look at the life of a, of a young woman. She's around the age 14, max 18 in that age range. Uh, and I'd like us to look at her, her capacity, her courage, her willingness to say yes, even in the most difficult circumstances, even in circumstances where it might have been so much easier to just say no. To help us with that, going to take you to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. 
The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. So when we meet Mary here for the first time, she's already entered in, into, into this relationship uh, with Joseph, uh, which in those days was, was a binding contract. And it wasn't that easy uh, to just break this contract. And there were consequences from both families as well. Uh, and, and here's this young woman, which I'm sure was just like, like any other young bride excited about this time before the wedding, getting ready for all the stuff and getting ready to live in Nazareth with Joseph. And that is until her life is just torn open at the seams. When this angel messenger of God walks into her life and says, you've been chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. And, and rightly, Mary is terrified. In hearing these words, and perhaps, perhaps she said a little something like, Whoa, angel man, uh, can you just check your notes again? Are you sure you're at the right place? You know that I am engaged to Joseph. You also know that I've never been with a man. I, I'm a virgin. So, so how can any of this be true? I'm sure you've got the wrong address. Just check your GPS and then go find the right person. But Gabriel doesn't leave. He does, however, say something to her that, that we so often find in Scripture when people are going through difficult times and things are hard that God will say to them. And he says that to her in verse 30 when he says, Do not be afraid, Mary. I get it, Mary. I get what's going on in your mind. And I know it's overwhelming. And it feels like your whole life is turned upside down. But here's the thing, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come over you. And the power, Greek word for power is the word dynamis. That dynamic power of God, that power that is always in motion, that power that is able to do, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And again, this is an interesting word in the Greek. Uh, it's a technical term that they knew that would take them back to the Old Testament. Episkiazo. It's the Greek word that he uses here. It's the same word they would use for that cloud that was there during their time in the wilderness that would guide them by day and by night, that symbolized God's presence with them. But that same cloud, that episkiazo, that would come down when Moses and Aaron went into the, into the tabernacle and God would come to meet with them, that would be this cloud. And it symbolized God, God's presence, God's being there. Mary. Don't be afraid, for God's power will be there to overshadow you every step of the way. You're not going to be alone at all. And that's when Mary says these most amazing words. Verse 28, I am the servant of the Lord. May every word that you've said about me come true. And in that moment, this young girl says yes to God, unequivocally yes, God, with an exclamation mark. And that's what I want to talk with you about today, uh, about, 
about this yes of Mary. And, and I want to show you three dimensions of this yes. The first dimension uh, I, I want us to notice is when Mary says yes to God, she says, yes, God, your son can be born into my life and in my life. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, seen this. God doesn't just gate crash Mary's life and run her over. God comes to Mary. And God tells Mary what he wants to happen. And this child is not conceived before Mary says, Yes, Lord, your son may be born into my life. And the same thing is true for us and for our lives. God does not gate crash our lives. God does not run us over with his bulldozer until we're into little pieces and then he puts us together again. No, no. God comes into our lives and, and, and God knocks and calls and speaks and whispers and waits until we say, Yes, Lord. And you see, my friends, that the good news of Christmas is not just that Jesus was born into this world 2,000 years ago. That too. But the amazing, the greatest news of Christmas is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is still born into our lives today. In that moment that we say yes. That is the amazing, the breathtaking, the miracle of Christmas. But here's the thing. Sometimes we just go through the motions, the trees and the wreath and the carols. And we, we miss the reality of the indwelling of Christ that is there for us. Because that divine birth will not happen in us until we stop just going through the motions. Until we get to that moment where we say to God, Lord, send your Holy Spirit into me so that Christ may be born in me, so that Christ may grow in me so that Christ may take shape in my life and my life take the shape of the Son of God that is born in me. Yes, Lord, come and be born in my life. I don't know where you are in your faith walk. I don't know if you said that yes to God. Can I invite you in this moment, just wherever you are, to just be quiet for a moment? And in this quiet moment, would you consider leaving the motions behind? And just saying, yes to God. Yes, God, come into my life. Be born in my life. Come and shape my life. I want you to be there in everything. Can you take a moment and just do that? Can I share a second dimension with you? Mary does not just say, yes, your son may be born into my life. But Mary also says, yes, Lord, I will trust you, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Let's just be honest about this. Mary never had an idea that she was going to be the mother to the Son of God. This was never her plan. And when this happens, her whole life is turned upside down in the little town of Nazareth. There were all kinds of implications. But Mary, 
despite the upheaval, despite the chaos, despite the fear, she says, I'm going to trust you. May everything that you have said about me come true because I am the servant of the Lord. Now, folks, I don't know how this last year has been for you. Maybe I should say how the last 20 plus months has been for you. I know we've all gone through COVID, are going through COVID. It's not past tense yet. Maybe this year has been one of those years for you. Maybe, and I know that because I stood with you, many of you, you've lost a loved one and this, going, this is going to be your first Christmas without that loved one and you don't know how you're going to manage that. Maybe your relationships have broken down and are struggling and are hurting. Maybe you've dreamt dreams that, that where you wanted to go and the things that you wanted to do and you wanted to visit grandchildren and be with them and, and that just didn't work out with COVID going on. Maybe things happened in your life that put your life on hold and then all the things that you wanted to do just can't happen because your body needs to heal right now. When these moments happen, there's one of two ways that we can go. We can either say, well, Lord, this is way too hard and way too difficult, and I don't see you in any of this, so I'm just going away from you. I'm done with you, and I'm going to do my own thing, and, and sorry, done. Or we can say, Lord, I don't get this. I don't know why it's so hard. It's really, really difficult for me. But I am going to say yes to you. And I want to trust you with my life, with my future, with my present, with everything in my life. I'm going to say yes, Lord, even in the most difficult circumstances when my life feels like it's turned all upside down. Can I invite you again, my friends, as I just did a moment ago? To take a moment, and just look at your life. And will you say, Lord, can I say yes to you? In this moment, when, when I bring to you all the things that are not that great, and all the things that make my life difficult, and all the things that kind of scare me, can I do like Mary and say, I am the servant of the Lord. May everything that you have said about me, my life, May that come true. Can I share a third dimension with you? Not only does Mary say, yes, Lord, your child can be born in my life. Not only does Mary say, Lord, I will trust you, even in the most difficult circumstances when things are upside down. But Mary also comes to this point where she says, yes, Lord, use me. I'm your servant. I'm excited, Lord. I want to be part of your dream for this world. Sign me up. I want to be a part of your rescue mission in this world. Use me. I want to be there. I'm excited about what you are going to do. I'm excited about how you're going to touch people's lives. Use me for that. Can we say that? Are we prepared to say, yes, Lord, I want to be part of your rescue mission in this world? Send your Holy Spirit into me, Lord, and overshadow me so that I can love people, I can care for people, I can bless people, and in saying yes, that they might see you. So can I invite you as we end to say yes to God? Can we go from, Lord, I'm going to do it myself to take my life, take care of my life, and use me? From give me to use me. Amen. Pray with me. Thank you that you come into our lives too. 
Thank you when you are born into our lives, Lord Jesus. You are born that we may have life and everything changes. Thank you that your light comes in also in our dark and difficult moments and we know that you are there because you are born into our lives. Thank you that you overshadow us, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit. And wherever we go, whatever the circumstance might be, we are filled with the power of the Most High. Give us the courage to say like Mary, I am your servant. May everything that you have said about me come true. Here we are, Lord. Use us. Amen. It was wonderful to spend this morning with you. Uh, and I hope that you can say yes to the Lord. Because remember this, when you go into this world now and you say yes, he always sends you with a promise, right? That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, our Father, and that amazing, overshadowing power, fullness of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen.